AITA for not letting my nephew use my camper to have his own room. Reminder. I am not op. Original post by you, Uncle Victor, throw away an R, am I the asshole in R, entitled people. Trigger warnings. Drug use. Child neglect. Less than. Mood spoilers. Hopeful for op and nephew. Less than. This was shared previously by you, Wormhole222. But there is a new update. Original posted four months ago. June 16, 22. In R, am I the asshole? My sister and her husband fell on hard times because of the pandemic. They went from renting a nice house to having to rent a room from a friend. It was supposed to be temporary. But they've been in his house for an entire year. And he didn't have more than one room to spare to rent to them. I have a family of my own. And my house is full. So I didn't want them living with me. But I have a vintage camper trailer in my backyard. One of those small ones they called a canned ham type. It's had various repairs over the years. Including redoing the floor and ceiling. As well as getting a new axle. And it's in pretty decent condition for being over 50 years old. I take this camper on yearly trips with friends. And on camping trips with my family. And I'm very anal about its upkeep. My sister though has asked to borrow the camper numerous times to put in her friend's backyard so. Her teenage son could have some privacy and use it as a personal bedroom. But I know my nephew. He's destructive with everything. And would turn my camper into a total mess. And I'm certain they wouldn't want to give it back whenever I need it because he'd already be. Living in it. I know they can't simply go out and get a camper of their own because ones in usable condition are not cheap, and right now they are trying to save every extra dime to get back on their own feet. Recently my sister has gotten our parents involved, and they think I should just lend them the camper, but I've still refused. They won't let up and seem to think that if they keep hounding me as a collective, that I'll give in, but I haven't. My wife is on my side, and has refused to let my sister and brother-in-law in when I wasn't home. They have a vehicle that can tow the camper, so I don't trust them not to take it if they can get in my backyard. My house also has cameras, and my sister and Bill are aware of them now. They say I'm ta because I only use the camper a few times a year, and they need it now, but I worry that they wouldn't want to give it back much less return it in the same condition. I firmly believe I'm in the right. But with my parents and sister constantly breathing down my neck, I thought I'd come here for an unbiased opinion. AITA for not lending them the camper? Info. I did suggest they get my nephew a tent. But they shot that idea down and called a tent temporary. If anything that just felt like another red flag to me. More info. Our parents do not live close anymore. They moved several states away to retire a few years ago. Update. I showed my sister and Bill this post after getting the verdict. My parents have seen it as well. They are all very unhappy with me. But my parents have backed off and say they won't bother me with it again. I also spoke with my sister alone. And went through the rough estimates of what possible repairs to the camper would be. Should my nephew damage it? My sister was not happy to see those numbers. Then I called her out on how they'd likely not want to return the camper when I need it. But they also tried to come to my house when I wasn't home to take it without permission. And I told her I'd have no problem calling police if they ever try that. My sister still tried to say her son needs the camper. But when I went through the comments on this post with her, she became incredibly embarrassed and then got very angry. She left saying she won't bother me for the camper anymore, but still stated she thinks I'm a jerk. I didn't reply because I knew she was waiting to gaslight me. Just waved her goodbye and she left. My bill called me shortly after to yell at me, but he had no leg to stand on other than they wanted. I told him I'd contribute $100 for a tent. But they're on their own for the rest they actually agreed to the $100.
So I guess my nephew is getting a tent to live in. I'd like to thank everyone here for all their great advice. You gave me what I needed to end this problem. Update posted 7 days ago. The 3rd of October 22. In our, entitled people. Hi everyone. A few days ago I saw an animation of my old post on YouTube. And decided to log back on and give everyone an update. But I couldn't do it in the original subreddit where I first posted. And tried to post in another subreddit that banned me. So I've come here instead. I just want to say that things seemed to get better after I made my sister and Bill give up on borrowing my camper. If they'd gotten their hands on it, I likely wouldn't have gotten it back any time soon short of getting police or a lawyer involved. They even tried to show up at my house to take the camper while I wasn't home. And my wife had to keep them out. I showed my last post to my sister, Bill and parents. And they were furious at me. But let go of the fact that my camper was not up for grabs out of sheer humiliation and embarrassment. They had no real logical way to argue with me. Especially after I brought up the amount of money that could end up being owed to me in repairs. Should they or my nephew damage the camper? That part made my sister extra sore at me. I thought we'd close the book on this whole mess. But it seems closing one book only opened another one. Things went downhill very badly a bit over a month after my original post so badly I couldn't believe it was really happening. And yet, it did. Many here may not believe it either. But here's what happened. Some wondered if my sister and Bill were going to actually use the $100 I gave them to get my nephew a tent to have his own space in the backyard. I admit I had my doubts. But they followed through on getting him one. Our parents sent them some money as well. And they got my nephew a good-sized tent that he can have a cot to sleep on in and a small amount of simple furniture. I personally donated the cot as I had an old Coleman one sitting in my garage unused for years. I gave him a folding camping chair too. The boy got electricity in the tent via an extension cord from the main house. However, he frequently complained about the heat during the day and only had a couple of those little pseudo air conditioners that you just put water in to keep his tent cool. Though honestly I doubt this situation would have been any different if he had my camper because it can get pretty hot inside of it too. Now on to what happened a bit over a month later. My sister and Bill were evicted from their friend's house. Apparently while there was trouble with my nephew needing his own space and being messy and defiant, they were having more trouble with the friend who was also their landlord. They tried to smooth things over by putting their son in the tent so he wouldn't be in the house. Much to avoid trouble, I suppose that might have worked. Had my sister and Bill not been caught with illegal drugs. And I mean the very bad ones. The kind that use a syringe. Their friend, landlord went into their room while they were away. And found their stash. That's why they were evicted. Suddenly it made sense why in two years they couldn't have afforded a small apartment to move into. Despite both of them working full time. Their extra cash just went right to their habits instead of saving it like they claimed to have. Been doing. Looking back. They did look a bit more unhealthy at the time. But I assumed it due to stress. And not long after being outed. Their habits put them behind bars. People who are on heavy drugs can go very wild in an instant. And that's exactly what happened. When their friend, landlord gave them an eviction notice for having found the drugs in his house. My sister and Bill both got physical with him. And he called the police. That scared them and they locked themselves in their rented room. Meanwhile my nephew was blissfully unaware of what was happening as he was just gaming alone in his tent. The friend, landlord pressed charges. And police soon arrested my sister and Bill because there were indoor security cameras that caught the whole altercation. I was very surprised about what happened when I heard about it. I got a call from the police station. And I was asked to take in my nephew since he could no longer stay where he was. 
since our parents are states away and living in a retirement community. They couldn't take him in. So it was up to me. And I did so. I wasn't particularly fond of my nephew. But I realized his upbringing really did not help our relationship. Nor did the fact that my sister and I don't really get along. We brought his tent over to my place and set it up in my backyard. He's still living in it. Even though we've cleared the attic out for him. But he says he likes the tent better because it feels like his own little house where he can just be himself. We've even added a mini fridge I bought used in there for him so he can have cold drinks when he wants them. Currently we're still working on becoming my nephew's permanent legal guardians. My sister and Bill are both facing heavy charges. They assaulted a man, resisted arrest, and were in possession of illegal drugs. From jail though they've actually been very cooperative. Albeit while dealing with withdraw from no longer being able to self-medicate. I've been to see my sister. And she said she and her husband were so out of it on the day it happened. They don't even remember attacking their friend. I don't know if they're faking memory loss to try and get a lesser punishment. Of if they really were that high. But I suppose it doesn't matter. It changes nothing since there was CCTV showing the attack. They are looking into possibly getting a plea deal when they go to court in November. But even with that, they may be in prison until their son is over 18 at least I didn't have the heart to risk the foster system on my nephew. My wife has had my back on this too. And we've been working as a team. My sister and Bill have signed over the title to their SUV to me. And the plan is to make it my nephew's vehicle when he gets older since he'll be 18 in 3 years. Or we can sell it to get him something that uses a lot less fuel. I already had to pay to get the SUV back from police impound. That's money I know I'm never going to get back. When my sister and Bill get out of prison in a few years. They're not exactly gonna have much to their name. So taking care of their son and making sure he grows up in a better environment feels like the least I can do. For those wondering about the drugs. It wasn't entirely out of left field. My sister was especially troubled in her teenage years. And struggled with addiction in her early 20s with the same drug. She nearly got kicked out of college for it. Our parents always dug her out of the mire and helped her back on her feet. They even paid for her rehab. We all thought she'd been clean for a long time. But she admitted to me when I visited her in jail that her husband also had the same addition issues. That's actually how they met. Not in rehab, but in a focus group after the rehab. They did not admit this to any of us until recently. Not sure why, but with the stress they faced in the past two years. Falling back into old habits became easy for them. I've tried checking up on their former landlord to ask if he was okay. However he wants nothing to do with my family. He had some pretty offensive things to say when I went over to gather my sister and BIL stuff. Once police gave me the okay. And the man actually threatened to pull a gun on me while I was carrying out boxes. He said he thinks my family are all alike. A bunch of filthy white trash see hash 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 hash. So I don't feel as sorry for him as I did since he's a pretty big jerk. My nephew also confirmed this. My kids weren't exactly receptive of their cousin being around them. There's a bit of an age gap between them. And they just don't relate to one another. And while my nephew is messy. We make him clean his tent once a week. And we make him shower at least two to three times a week. We live in a warmer climate. But now that the seasons are changing, it's cooling down a little bit to where he says the tent isn't so bad. He's got a tablet, a laptop, a DVD player, and a Nintendo Switch to occupy his time. But we keep these things in the house whenever my nephew isn't home. It's way easier to steal out of a tent than a house after all. Considering how angry my nephew was before, he rarely shows his temper now. Yes he makes it hard to get him to do his chores. But as a whole, he's shown more improvement in a couple months than I saw in three years. 
He is extremely grateful, but he's also very solitary. We give him his space most of the time. And I make sure my kids don't bother him either. He's going through a lot right now. My nephew plays a lot of Zelda and Fortnite. At least those are two of the games he plays that I know of. My kids love those games too. We've also given my nephew the old 10-speed road bike I used to use years ago. He rides it to and from school as we live about a mile away from the local high school. Thus far most of the drama from him has been school-related. He had to change to a different high school and make new friends. Which he wasn't particularly happy about. He really doesn't like doing his homework. And he's been fighting with his teachers. But that's a problem many parents face on the regular. He says he's made a few new friends though. And I'm thankful for that. We're taking things one step at a time. And so far it's slowly getting better. My nephew has also talked of one day getting a part-time job. For the record, he brought this up, not me or my wife. He says he needs to be ready to be independent when he's 18. But we wouldn't kick him out just for getting older. He's one of our kids now too. After all, but if he's willing to work hard and move on to working full-time or going to college, we'll encourage him. I just don't want him ending up like either of his parents. He seems to be far better off mentally without their influence now anyway. It makes me regret not wanting to take him in sooner. But I didn't know how bad things really were. To think, this all started because my sister and Bill wanted my camper for their son. And those of you who said they potentially wanted it to skip town if they'd gotten a hold of it. You may very well have been right. They were on thin ice with their landlord. And falling ever deeper into drug use. Thus far though my nephew has been completely indifferent to the camper. Even though his tent is practically right next to it. He says as long as he has his own space. He's fine. Reminds me of when I was his age. I enjoyed hanging out and spending nights in the old shed my parents made into a playhouse for me and my sister when we were kids. But we are still required to have a room at the ready for my nephew whenever a social worker checks up on us. He has the bulk of his stuff in the attic room, but chooses to stay in the tent, which the social worker didn't seem to mind since it was my nephew's preferred place to hang out so long as an actual room was available to him. We also have a seven-foot-tall privacy fence all around the backyard. And cameras too. That helps my nephew feel safe back there at least so for now I think we have things covered. I probably won't update again as it's pretty much a guarantee my sister and Bill are going to be locked up for a few years. Our parents are especially mad at them about it and have thanked me to no end for taking my nephew in. They want to fly over to visit this Christmas so we can all spend time as a big family for the first time since before the pandemic. And before I go, I know some are probably going to ask where BIL's family is in all of this. Couldn't they help? Why didn't my sister and Bill ask them for help? Well the answer is they couldn't. I don't know a lot. But Bill spent the latter half of his own childhood in the foster system. His family aren't in his life. I don't know who they are or where they are. He hated them so much that he actually took my family name when he married my sister. So they aren't involved whatsoever with my nephew. Reminder. I am not op. Original post by you, Uncle Victor Throwaway. That went in a completely different direction than I thought it would. His sister and Bill were totally going to sell the camper for drugs. Anyone else surprised that they actually used the $100 to buy the kid a tent or do you think they scammed the parents as well to make a bit extra to go into their veins? I keep imagining one of those really small tents that only fit a sleeping bag and feel horrified dot but then i read all the stuff the kid has and that he even chose that over the attic and realize it's much larger than what i'm assuming he's got a tablet a laptop a dvd player 
and a Nintendo Switch to occupy his time. With a setup like that plus a mini fridge in the tent I wouldn't want to be around much younger. Cousins, siblings either. Just saying. Lots of people are concerned about the nephew still sleeping in the tent. But look at it from the nephew's perspective. He went from sharing a room with his addicted and using parents to having his own space. Even if it wasn't indoors. He probably felt better there than with his parents. Which would attach warm feelings to the tent. Then he got moved to an unfamiliar environment with annoying younger kids. BC all 15 years olds find their baby cousins at least a little annoying sometimes. But hooray. He has one spot of familiarity with him. And it's the safe place he has warm feelings for. Then it gets even more improvements. Like electronics and entertainment. And so more happy feelings get attached to the tent. Meanwhile. Inside are annoying kids and adults that he's not 100% sure what to do with because they don't do. The things he's prepared for aka what his parents did. Inside has uncertain and annoying feelings. The tent has happy feelings. Even if we don't think the tent deserves his happy feelings. Of course he chooses the tent over the attic room. I would bet that over the next three years. As he becomes more comfortable with his family and the kids grow up a little. He'll move more and more into the attic room. And the tent will become more of an alone time space. Maybe he'll give it up altogether. Maybe not. But the kid's going through huge changes and transitions. It's perfectly natural that he would prefer a familiar space. Even if it's a situation everyone else would consider bad or mediocre. This is why it's so important not to get involved with other addicts. It's hard enough to stay sober alone. I wonder how much of the destruction was simply blamed on the nephew. It makes me regret not wanting to take him in sooner. As an outsider, I can see OOP's sister and Bill manipulating this to get things out of OOP. Or make his life more difficult than when they just wanted the camper. I also don't think his nephew would have improved the way he has. Had the parents been a presence in his life. I'm glad everything is turning around now. Though. Wow, I'll be honest, I didn't expect that update. I genuinely wish the best for everyone involved. Hope Oop gets his nephew some therapy. Kid's been through a lot at his young age. And the fact that he's spending more and more time alone isn't a great sign. Glad he's been able to make friends at his new school though. Ah, man. Poor kid. That camper would have been sold for drugs so fast it would have made OP's head spin. So glad he held his ground. The takeaway here is that the nephew wasn't actually the kind of kid Oop thought he was. Living with parents who have substance abuse issues will change the behavior of any kid. No matter what age they are. So Oop is doing right by his nephew and showing him that he has options. He can have a better life than he probably began to think he could. And while it's been one roller coaster of a journey, hopefully the path ahead is easier for the kid. Maybe the kid wasn't the problem. I'm glad the nephew is doing better but I hope they're not giving him too much space. Gotta make sure he knows he's loved and make sure he's not getting self-destructive or depressed. I hope OOP's nephew doesn't let the bad experiences mold him as he grows older. So I don't feel as sorry for him as I did since he's a pretty big jerk. I don't know. If my friends that I'm trying to help have tried to kill me after I found out they use drugs and don't pay rent or whatever, I would be pretty pissed to anyone related to them. I don't know about the gun stuff though. I wonder if they wanted the camper so their son at least wouldn't see them do drugs. Not that it changes anything now, but just a thought. Geez the poor nephew. 
I didn't realize how old he was and just assumed he was an adult child just living with the parents. Turns out he's only 15. Living in a tent in the backyard because his parents lost the house and are using all their time. And money on drugs. Why did no one intervene before the whole issue with attempting to steal the camper? And then everyone was just chill with throwing a $100 bill and a camp chair at him? Like I'm glad it worked out in the end. But holy hell that poor boy was just left in the yard like a neglected dog. I want to see what this tent looks like. Sounds a lot more affordable than rent. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.